Hello everybody, welcome back or welcome to Cooking with Johnny B. Today we're going to be making one of my very favorite all-time meals, chili. This is a great time of year in the winter to make this nice warm comfort food and we're going to be making it in the instant pot so it can be done actually pretty quickly with in less than an hour. That includes prep time, cook time, and then time to eat. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to prepare the vegetables, how to cook the meat, and then essentially how to assemble everything in the instant pot and turn it on and cook the food. Okay let's talk about the ingredients that are going to go into this beautiful chili. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare all the vegetables. So I like to usually start with the onions. So I'll, I'll kind of turn sideways so you can kind of see how I do this. Next we're going to do the bell peppers. This is definitely something that I did learn from America's Test Kitchen on the best way to cut through bell peppers. You cut the top and then you cut the bottom and you make a little slice through here and this knife goes right in here and it just runs along all of these ribs and it just makes it so easy to cut these peppers. And there you have it. Pepper is clean and ready to be chopped up. Now we do the same with the orange pepper. Now that may look like a lot of vegetables, but actually it's going to cook down quite a bit, so it won't have so much volume. So let's look at these poblano peppers. These are a little bit different to carve and to chop, so I'll show you the method I like to use. First I cut off the top, and then I go down one of the sides, I open it up, and I do just like this. I peel down each one of these little ribs, just to make sure that there's none of that left in the, and, and that includes the seeds. Make sure all the seeds are out, now this pepper, the poblano, is not a hot pepper. This pepper is very much like the peppers you would get in a chili relleno. It just has great flavor, but not a lot of spice. So that's what it looks like uh, before I start dicing it. Yeah, one thing to mention, um, chopping vegetables, you need to have a good knife. I, I particularly like this knife, it's from Ikea. And uh, it has some little ribs on it to keep the food from sticking. And this is actually an Ikea uh, cutting board. These are like uh, two cutting boards for less than $2. And this knife runs about $14. All right, the end of the vegetables they go. All right, now comes the fun part. Now, I've just recently purchased this induction cooktop and it works great with cast iron. So I've got my cast iron skillet here heating up. I have it set at 370 degrees, which is a great um, temperature for doing vegetables. I'm just gonna grab some butter here. Make sure to put a good amount of butter in the pan. Now an induction cooktop takes very little time to heat up, and you can see already that the butter is already starting to sizzle. I wish you could smell this. This is amazing. And in go the vegetables. And we're going to cook these vegetables down to about half of their volume, what you see here right now. And it's a good time to put a little salt in here as well. That will, the salt will help to uh, sweat the vegetables a little bit. I don't go overboard on it, just enough to kind of help the vegetables release their liquid. 
and we just stir away until it's ready to go. I've turned the, the temperature up just a little bit to about 400 degrees and you can see it's actually sizzling, sizzling a little bit better. This is actually my maiden voyage on this uh, new cooktop, which I really like. Uh, induction cooking is so fast and it's something in the future I'll be doing a video on this. This is a duck's top induction cooktop. It goes great with cast iron. As you can see, these uh, vegetables are just perfectly done and ready to go into the Instant Pot. And I'm going to lift this up and put these directly in to the Instant Pot, right there on the bottom. Hmm, I wish you could smell this, it smells so good. And right on top of this, I'm actually gonna turn this right back on. And I'm gonna start with the ground beef. This is one pound of grass-fed ground beef. Not too, um, too lean. You don't want it to be too lean. You want there to have enough fat to, um, to make your chili taste good. But here's another in thing that I found that I just absolutely love, and it's this particular kitchen gadget. Um, it, it, it works great for doing any kind of ground beef in a in uh, ground beef or mashed potatoes or you name it. It's just a great kitchen tool. I think I found this one on Amazon about a year and a half ago. It helps to break everything down into small little bits. Okay, we're getting close. The combination of the smell of the ground beef and the onions and peppers is just just making my mouth water. Now when you're doing your ground beef, you don't necessarily have to do it completely 100% cooked because the Instant Pot is going to take it the rest of the way. So I just try to make sure that all the pieces are small so that they're easily able to mix throughout the whole thing of chili and not one big glump of uh, ground beef in one spot or the other. All right, now that the ground beef is done, I'm just going to transfer this right up over into the Instant Pot. This is the part that actually takes the most time, getting all of your meat and vegetables prepared and in the pot. Mmm, boy, that smells good. I probably said that a million times today, but it really does smell good in this kitchen. Now the last part that needs to be pre-cooked are the beef ribs. So let's turn this back up to 400. And we'll put a little bit more butter. just so that nothing sticks. And here are my tongs, so we're just gonna put these in. We're just gonna move the butter around a little bit with that rib. And I like to cook these enough to where the fat starts to render a little bit and so that I can take the bones out. Once again, we do not need to overcook these ribs. We just want to make sure that they have kind of a nice crust on them, which just does, just adds great flavor to the chili. Hopefully you can see really well what this is doing. It's nothing like cooking beef in a cast iron skillet. All righty. I like to get these little bones off on the edge. Some of the most tender parts of the meat are right around the bone, so I'm going to do my best to keep as much of that in as possible.
All right, now that all the meat is uh, chopped up, let's put it right here in the instant pot. Let's kind of stir it up a little bit. The next step is to make sure we drain all of these beans. Get rid of all of the juices that are from the can in the beans. So I just kind of rinse them off. Make sure it's just the bean because if you have the juices, there's too much starch in it and it thickens up the chili too much. So I just do this uh, on, on all the beans, the canned beans that I use in this kind of recipe. It doesn't take much time and it's pretty easy to do. It's time for us to combine all the ingredients in the Instant Pot. So we'll start out with the, two, with the can of tomato sauce. Two cans of crushed tomatoes. One six ounce can of tomato paste. Okay, one little can of diced chilies, green chili. This is two tablespoons of chili powder. And this is one teaspoon of cumin and one teaspoon of smoked paprika, or paprika, however you prefer to say it. And then all the beans that we just rinsed go right on top. Just stir it up and you'll see how delicious this is going to look. Once we get all of the meat and the veggies and the beans incorporated, you can kind of get an idea of what this is going to look like when it's done cooking. Okay, time to put on the lid. The lid is on and we're ready to program. So the first thing we're going to do is push pressure cook and it's at 40 minutes. Let's make this 45 minutes. That will make sure that all of the meat is really super tender. We let it go and then pretty soon it will say on. Once we stop touching the uh, keypad, it says on. Now it's ready to go. We have less than a minute to go and as soon as we hear the beep, uh, it'll be time to release the pressure and enjoy some really, really delicious chili. Well, that's the sound of the chili being done. So let's open it up and see what's inside here. First thing we have to do is to gently open up the steam, steam valve and let all the pressure out. Now that the pressure indicator valve has already depressed, now we know it's safe to open the pot and enjoy some great chili. And remember to always open away from yourself so the steam doesn't burn you. You can set this right on the little tab holder here. And let's look at this amazing chili. Look at that. That just looks amazing. But the proof is in the taste. Look at that. Look how nice and firm that is without being too firm. That just looks like amazing chili to me. How about you? Well, the only thing left to do now is to taste it and see what it's like. Mmm. Oh my goodness, that's so good. You can taste the beef rib, the poblano chilies, um, it's subtle flavor. It's not too spicy, but man, is this delicious. Mmm, yeah. that is so good. I can't wait for you to taste this at your home. So when you try it, I would appreciate it if you would just write a comment and say what you think about my recipe for chili. I think you'll really like it.
And if you do, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel, like this video, and send it to somebody else so that they can have the benefit of learning how to use their kitchen appliances as well. So that's it for another episode of Cooking with Johnny B, and I'll catch you on the next one.